How you doing? I'm Chris Flowers, president of Vets for Biz. Uh, this is episode number two in our series called Vet Review, where we interview veterans um, in different uh, positions, whether they're CEOs. Uh, I happen to be here with uh, Bill Stevens. He's the city manager for Litchfield Park. Good morning, sir. Thank you for your time. I certainly you, appreciate Chris. it. He's going to explain to us a little bit about, obviously, his background, being prior military, uh, how he's in the position he's in today, and what uh, resources maybe are out there uh, for veterans to to use to you know um, to advance in, in their careers and also kind of tell us about what he's doing here in Litchfield Park. So please, uh, see Mr. Stevens, if you go ahead and sure. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're uh, it is morning here in Litchfield Park, Arizona. Uh, it's a great little community, and uh, if you ever get a chance to come here and check it out, please do so. There's some things to do here, places to eat, and we've got some really big things coming up on the horizon. I'll tell you a little bit about that here in uh, just a little while. Uh, give you a little bit of my background. Um, I come from a family of military veterans. My grandfather was a U.S. Navy uh, veteran in World War I. His son, my uncle, was a U.S. Navy veteran in World War II. And uh, my father and his two brothers were uh, uh, Army, uh, World War II. Um, the two uncles were uh, Army Air Corps. And, uh, and so uh, uh, advance a few years, uh, and then I have three brothers who were all Army uh, during the Vietnam time frame and um, and then I was going to graduate from high school and go into the army but uh, my three brothers came back from their tours of duty and said no you're not <laughs> um, which was uh, for a young man coming out of high school gung-ho ready to go that was uh, a little discouraging and I asked them why not and they said because uh, you're gonna go to college first that's right uh, and that's kind of the reason why I went to college actually um, so off I went to college, and when I graduated from college, I uh, uh, joined the Air Force and uh, became a navigator. And, um, and then after that, I became several different things. As many of you know, sometimes the military will move you around and have you do different things. Um, so I was uh, a lot of different things, executive officer, air weapons controller, security cop commander, ground safety. And eventually became um, what they used to call back in the day a base commander or I was a deputy at the time uh, which today we call support group and um, then I became a support group commander and uh, mixed in a few headquarters tours and 37 years later I retired and uh, as a result of that and my background which was in essence running bases were small cities mm -hmm. um, I was very familiar with public works or what we call civil engineering uh, in the military and we had personnel, we had logistics, we had um, uh, security forces or a police force, we had a fire department, both flight line and the base, and many of you are familiar with a lot of that. And as a result of that, I uh, decided to put my resume out, come back home to the state of Arizona, which is where I uh, grew up and went to college at Arizona State University, and um, landed a job in a small rural town in southeast Arizona. Uh, Benson, Arizona, and I worked there for four years as their city manager and um, uh, continuing to try to get here to the Valley of the Sun near Phoenix and the Litchfield Park job came open. I interviewed for that and was selected and uh, so here I am. I've been here now almost five months and we've got so many things going on here in town. Uh, we have uh, approximately 30 acres that the city has purchased and that's right in the middle of town. It hasn't been developed over the years and uh, they're about to begin uh, development of a city center, a retail city center, which will include uh, office space, retail stores, restaurants, and possibly some above retail store office space living. Uh, that's to be determined, but like I said, about 30 acres. And across the street uh, is another 15 acres that one of our local partners here, uh, the uh, JDM partners who app own the Wigwam Resort, uh, they're going to be redoing the Wigwam Resort, which is um, um, a centerpiece here for the city of Litchfield Park. And they're also going to be developing some uh, residential and retail uh, in the 15 acres right across the street from the 30 acres that the city owns right down the street from City Hall. Uh, so there's going to be a lot going on here, a lot of opportunity for businesses to open, a lot of opportunity for restaurants to open, uh, for folks to bring their businesses in and use some of the office space that will be created and also to uh, possibly live right here in, in Litchfield Park as well. So that's going to be huge, a lot of things going on. We're going through um, some planning stages right now as we meet with the citizens and we get input 
Uh, we've had a couple of meetings with them and one meeting with the council. And um, we have our planners are out right now trying to put together a design to bring back to us. And uh, once we can agree upon that and, and get, uh, get a, a vote, uh, affirmative vote from the council, then we can move forward with a developer and uh, begin to put together the city center and work in, in conjunction with and collaboration with uh, JDM partners as well to improve the community. So a lot going on here in Litchfield Park. Yeah. Real excited about it and I'm uh, very happy uh, uh, to be part of that. And uh, we have a great council here. Uh, they work well together and our citizens are very engaged. Uh, it's a small community, about 6,000 people, might grow to seven, uh, and then we'll be pretty much built out, but uh, we're about 3.3 square miles, so uh, it's a very nice little community. Mm -hmm. So like I said, come on and visit us, and uh, uh, I'd like to show you around, or at least you can show yourself around. Thanks. And golfing at the Wigwam is really good. It's a Three good championship <laughs> golf courses there that are a lot of fun to play. Yeah, it's a good track if you want to go golfing. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about maybe, you know, your transition when you were coming out of the military. You know, you, so you're in the military life, you know, you're very structured and of course, you know, you're sure. a commander. So, sure. you know, you're used to having, you know, a lot of weight on your shoulders, things like that. What was it like when you very first said, okay, I'm putting in my papers and I mean, did, was there, a, did you take a little bit of off time or did you kind of like reset a little bit or how, how was, how was that transition like? Sure. So, um, I fell into a unique uh, clause in the in the const or uh, the um, yeah, the law, the Constitution, that actually, um, and then the Air Force approved and allowed me to stay uh, to age sixty. And uh, I, although I did not stay to to age sixty, I had that option. And so, uh, at my last assignment, um, I had uh, uh, no longer a service commitment to do. I was in essence on my own time, mm -hmm. and. Um, started thinking about transitioning and uh, did I want to simply retire or did I want to continue to contribute uh, and that's a point I'd like to make to everybody watching we all live here in this world and the only way it's going to get better is if you get engaged and sometimes it's not easy sometimes there are difficult individuals because people have differing ideas and uh, so I would encourage you not to give up I would encourage you to move forward and continue where you can to try and make a difference in your community and, uh, and so that's kind of the decision-making process that I went through. Uh, I had uh, a nice home in Charleston, South Carolina at the time. I'd been at uh, Charleston Air Force Base and uh, now Joint Base Charleston. And uh, so it was very attractive as the possibility of simply going to that home and retiring. Just but, shutting it down. And that's right, shutting it down and just calling it a day. But I still had a lot of energy, a lot of drive, and I still felt the drive to be involved and to, to uh, contribute and um, and I also had uh, some pull to come home to Arizona where all my family resides and so I decided that um, I would throw my application out and try to see what happens but before I did that I sat down and consulted with several individuals I started with of course like many of those around me and talked to them about some of their thoughts and uh, and I actually called a few people that I knew who had already transitioned and I asked them some of the things that uh, they went through. Uh, what should I expect? What should I possibly do to plan? And uh, they gave me some good advice. And um, a friend of mine uh, gave me a contact with an individual who actually uh, works on um, resumes okay. for executive level type resumes. And since I was going for city manager, that's I thought that would be a great thing to do. So I engaged with them. And, they took all of my military experience and turned it into civilian terms. And that's very important because you'll find that a lot of folks out there don't really understand what you do, or they just kind of get the impression that um, in the military, you march around a lot with a gun and a, and a helmet and you don't really have a lot of experience, but that's just not true. We all know that right. you get the best training the world has to offer. Uh, in, in our military force and and so take advantage of that and and uh, learn how to translate what you do from military terms to civilian terms and so I had help doing that I went to someone to help me do my resume and put that together and I put my resume out and um, uh, I, I still met with uh, well gee you don't you don't really you're, you you spent time in the military 
So that kind of went, I went through the interview process with kind of some of that concept. And so I had to really know my stuff, if you will, and be able to articulate my experiences into civilian terms so that it would make sense to a city council who interviewed me uh, as to how I would be able to uh, work for them and do good things for them and be able to run a, a, a city, a municipal city that uh, in their eyes, they weren't sure how that related to a military base. But eventually by the time I was done, um, they were uh, very pleased and they selected me and I went to work, like I said, in Southeast Arizona and Benson, Arizona. And, mm -hmm. and I spent four years there helping, helping that city and uh, it's a, a really unique little community down in the San Pedro River Valley. And um, so uh, I was really blessed to be there and made a lot of friends and contacts. And um, but when the opportunity came to come home and to be near my family, um, I uh, interviewed for the job here in Litchfield Park and uh, came up here. So uh, it's been a very, very uh, exciting time of transiting uh, and changing in some respects a little bit how I think. Um, so that um, I can encourage and motivate others around me uh, in a little bit different way than we do in the military. Um, not so much in the sense of encouraging, but in the sense of many of you in the military or that have had military experience understand that the military puts responsibility on you and they expect you to carry that through. Um, that is not always the case with everyone. Um, they, they, they want to do well, they want to um, be successful, and, um, but sometimes they don't have the kind of background and training that we get by being in the military. And so uh, I would encourage you, if you're gonna transition and get out and go into a different career field, to just keep that in mind because you might be the person everyone looks up to and looks to for advice, counsel, and encouragement. And, uh, and so that's kind of been my experience is um, uh, in leading, if you wanna call it that, uh, and being able to share what I learned in a different way with folks around me in the municipal government environment and uh, to help encourage them to move forward and do good things for the community and the citizens of whatever community I'm in. And in this case, it's Litchfield Park today. Okay. So obviously you were in a little bit different situation because you, obviously you were a commander, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you were a colonel. So your situation may be a little bit different than uh, transitioning, let's say, maybe a 24-year-old you know, 11 Bravo infantry guy, right. uh, you know, things like that. So uh, obviously through, not only through your military experience, but obviously just through your life's wisdom and things like that, um, how could you maybe uh, give some, inf you know, give some advice to, you know, some of our uh, other brothers and sisters who's that sure. either are just transitioning out now or maybe have been out for a while and are still kind of searching, they're still kind of like, you know, trying to find their place and things like that. Uh, again, from a, from a commander's point of view, from a city manager's point of view, and then obviously just from a life's wisdom kind of point of view. What 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 resources maybe are out there, maybe we don't know about, or just you know, just from like said your your general experience. Sure. Well, one of the things I would encourage is if you've been in the military and you've been trained to do something, uh, whether it's uh, administrative or technical. And don't get me wrong, being a technical person or a technician is very important. Um, whatever it is that you do. Um, you can utilize that in the civilian world. And um, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is to understand the fact that by the training that you've gotten, the experience that you've gotten, you are a motivated person who's dedicated and committed to do good things, to do the right thing, to get the job done, if you will. And many, many bosses, and I'll speak from a a commander or a boss's point of view, uh, uh, if you will, a city manager's point of view, we're looking for people who are willing to jump in with both feet and both hands and and be the go-to person, the expert, if you will. And that takes time uh, to do that. But willingness, attitude, that's huge. That's 99% of success. Mm -hmm. and, and, and don't get me wrong, this isn't a dream world. You're going to meet with um, failures. You're going to not be picked. You're going to interview and you're going to have to go to the next job. Eventually it will happen for you. You have to overcome the, um, if you will, the tendency to become negative, to become discouraged. Um, it's very easy to go there, so don't. Um, you're valuable. You've got a lot of background. Even if you're 24 years old and you don't have almost 40 years of experience like I do, you still have a lifetime ahead of you. 
So what would someone be looking for in a 24 year old with a lifetime ahead of them? A positive attitude. Someone who's willing to show up on time, every time. Mm -hmm. Who's available and who is dedicated, committed, and devoted to coming and being the person that learns the job, that knows the job, and becomes, like I said earlier, the expert, the go-to person. I advise my own children to do that, and uh, in many cases, they've done just that. And um, maybe not at first, uh, they, your bosses don't come to you initially, and maybe they take, maybe you feel like they're taking advantage of you because you're doing so much more. But in the ultimate end, your reputation will be huge. It will be positive, and as long as you don't. Um, let go and step out of line and do something bad or wrong, you're going to be viewed in a very positive way and eventually you'll begin to climb. Your career will begin to soar and you will find that you'll become successful. So don't give up, be, be encouraged. It, it can happen. All right. Well, like I said you covered a lot of the questions, you know, I was actually going to cover. So you got to, you know, what you were expounding there. So that's uh, pretty great. Um, that's what I like you know, about talking to you. You're always just go flow right into it. It's a natural flow. Uh, one one more thing, like I said, I would uh, just like to you know share as well. Is obviously I'm not the youngest guy you know around either. I got a little bit of life experience as well. Again, you know, been in the business financial industry for 23 years. You know, I knew how to do what I got out of the military was you know shoot things and blow things up. Okay, so it was not a smooth transition, but kind of like the Colonel was saying, if you're motivated. You cannot be stopped. Like I said, we've been through worse. There's nothing the civilian world's gonna throw at you that we haven't already seen and done and overcome, okay? So uh, uh, to kind of expound a little bit what the Colonel was saying that if you have a dream, if you have a focus, you have a goal, we're veterans. We're gonna make those goals. Nothing's gonna stop us from doing that. But you don't have to do it on your own. There are resources out there, okay? There are people out there you can talk to, get advice from, don't try to do it on your own. And then, uh, you know, let's, let's all lean on each other. Let's come together as a community. And then, you know, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, use the resources that we have available and do what we can do that way. We're, we're all successful and we, uh, we all strive to meet our goals. But once again, I just wanted to, you know, say thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sure. Sure for, you know, giving us your, uh, your experience there and uh, giving us some, some motivation. And it was a definitely appreciate Absolutely. your time. And I want to say good luck to everybody out there. Thanks, Chris. All right. And we're out.